Toño. Hey everybody, it's Andy Kushner with The Wedding Biz, and this is another episode of The Next Level, in which I have a guest co-host, and together we discuss the most recent interview of the week, and suss out a few of the key topics and help translate them into some specific tactical strategies and advice and tips for you to use to bring uh, your own business to the next level. And before I introduce today's wonderful guest, I want to first mention last week's interview. If you missed it, you got to check it out. It was Marcy Bloom, the Marcy Bloom. And then for the next level, we had the Lynn Easton as the guest co-host to talk about my interview with Marcy. So be sure to check out both of those episodes if you missed them. And now I'm about to announce today's special guest co-host who appeared on the show in September of 2017, September 18. I interviewed her in New Orleans. And if you still are not sure who it is, it is Valerie Gernhauser of Sapphire Events. Hey, Valerie, how are you doing? I'm well. Thanks, Andy. Always a pleasure to join you. Yeah. And I want to tell everybody, you've got to listen to Valerie's interview because it is still quite relevant and we'll have links and everything in the show notes. Uh, let me tell people about you, Valerie, If it, for those who may not know you. Valerie has quite a story, having begun her career in events around the time of Hurricane Katrina, the financial banking crisis of 2009 and economic downturn. And she has really thrived since. Valerie is also a wonderful, wonderful speaker. And she created her Sapphire Session Speaking Tour, a specialized program for wedding planners and event designers. So it's great to have you on the show, Valerie. Let me tell everybody about the guest that we're going to be speaking about of the week. And that is Carrie Goldberg. Carrie is the travel and weddings director at Harper's Bazaar, where she oversees all things bridal, weddings, and travel for Bazaar.com. And in charge of uh, content, strategy, and visuals for Bazaar's digital travel and wedding verticals, editor of Bazaar's new membership subscription program called Bazaar Bride. Carrie and I had a great conversation. If you didn't catch it, you really should listen to the whole thing because Valerie and I could only address so many things in this brief period of time. So, uh, Valerie, you know, one of the first things that really popped out big time to me that Carrie brought up was redefining what luxury is. And she was saying that luxury is is no longer a synonym for expensive. And to her, it's completely experiential. And it's all about how you're made to feel. And, and really, taste has no price. So, it's essentially morphed from what she called barefoot luxury to experiential luxury. What, what do you think about all that? You know, I've heard her speak at um, Engage on this most recently at Baja Mar. And I just find it wonderful, honestly, the uh, efforts that she's making to sort of redefine that term luxury, which I think it's misinterpreted by so many people, quite frankly. And I love her uh, description of it as a more of barefoot luxury. Luxury is how you feel and it's not how expensive something is or a price point in particular, because something can be quite expensive, but it might not really impact your emotions all of that all that much. And um, everything that she's doing and talking about with that, I think is just spot on and uh, and really reflects what I'm seeing in, from the planner side of things um, as clients are coming to me with certain expectations for their event goals and how they want the planning process to take place has a lot more to do about the overall experience for them and for their guests and family members. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I, I've done some work, you know, on the music side of my business. When I, I talk to people who, especially with especially with larger budgets, where I know that they've really seen it all. They've seen everything, the best entertainment, the best events, and what can we do for them? You know, and and it's really what we're talking about here. It's priceless, which is giving them an experience. It's a one-time experience that the guests are only going to get that one particular night or or series of nights. And so you really can't put a price on it. I, I love that the public, the industry is is really just embracing that completely now. Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, it is really so refreshing. And I think it's the the perspective of the clients and those that are getting married these days that they really want to focus on the people and the meaning and the relationships. And it's not about things or materials. It is, uh, you know, a return to really what's most important about life and celebrating and, and making these milestones. 
You know, it's funny too, within the context of, of that part of the conversation, Carrie was also talking about how a four day, for example, a four day experience versus a four hour one also offers more fashion, beauty, and accessories opportunities, opportunities for more outfits. Being a guy, that wasn't the first thing I thought of. I thought that was great. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and these these weekends are coming around to be more than just uh, a, a few hours on a day. It is multiple days of, you know, several events all in a row and lots of opportunities for, yeah, for styling and doing what she does and, and spending that much more quality time, of course, with, with the people that, yes. uh, that have traveled so far. Yeah, that's a really, really good point, too. And it's interesting, too, the whole conversation that we had about millennials. I mean, it is a very, very big topic. You know, so many people I talk to on this show have thoughts about that, feelings about it. You know, we're all kind of, uh, maybe not not you in your 30s, but uh, many of us who are a bit older are, are really working hard to, to understand these very different buying habits. And so, Carrie was saying how, look, millennials now are in their 30s and they have more spending power and, and that millennials have gotten really a, a, a bad rap as far as being perceived to be entitled and spoiled. And Carrie was saying, look, you know, we as millennials, we just want to be acknowledged for our own personal style. And that's what it's about. What, what do you think? Yeah, I think I think that she's right on with that. And I believe she and I both are at relatively the same state in our millennialness. <laughs> I find myself to be one foot firmly planted in millennial and one foot in Gen X-ish. So I can kind of see the struggle. And sometimes I do struggle with full on millennials understanding or trying to wrap my head around, you know, the thought process and and the perception of entitlement and being spoiled and things like that. Honestly, I think what it boils down to is there is so much information in, in all of our fingertips these days and millennials are the most adept for the most part they are digital natives instead of digital immigrants coming into this digital world they've been born into it so they're used to having all of the information they need to make any kind of decision right at their fingertips and a committee of people to run these decisions by uh, friends and family to validate the choices that they're going to make so the sense of entitlement and um, this sort of, you know, spoiled nature, I think, is just a side effect of having lots of information readily available to them to do the research and make sure they're making a really good choice. And they might feel entitled to a result because they feel like, you know, meritoriously, they have done all of the work that should lead to this result being what they want and in line with their desires. So I can see that. Yeah, and and I, I love that you're pointing that out because that that was you know really important to carry, which is that sometimes we in the industry, especially a little older, tend to assume uh, that we know what they want when it's more important than ever to really listen and yes. and find you know and right and learn what it is what it is they want and not have this preconceived notion or a judgment. And Carrie was saying how look, bottom line when she thinks about it is is that they want they basically want a beautifully done experience with great food, great music that helps them feel, and this was interesting to me, I wonder what you think, feels like they're entertaining almost at home. You know, it's it's not so much looked on uh, necessarily as the biggest day of their lives. Um, rather, it's an extension of how they live their lives right now, day to day. Sure. And, and that's exactly what I see too, is um, in fact, when I'm talking to potential clients that are interviewing me and what sets us apart, there are plenty of events that look the same. And same, same is one of the side effects, I think, of all the social media curation and what we see on Instagram. It's just so hard to find things that really stand out and are different in a pool of sameness. And what I like to point out to my potential clients and those that I enjoy working with most are those individuals that really are seeking an extension of their entertainment style and their hosting style on a different level, you know, yeah. times 200 people versus, uh, you know, eight people at their home for dinner. We want to entertain in the same way that they would um, with their name on it and not be a cookie cutter replica of someone else's event. It should be special and personal. And in that alone sets an event apart from anything else that those guests might experience if they attended someone else's. So, 
Yeah, I like I like really everything you're saying there. It makes so much sense to me. She was also saying, you know, bringing it back to fashion and styling that she was saying that millennials, I mean, not that it's only limited to millennials, but in particular, don't want to feel like, you know, this is the one time that they've got to be or feel the most beautiful. It's It's not just only the wedding day. I mean, yes, that obviously that's really huge and big, but like you're saying, it's an extension of, of how they're living their lives on a day-to-day you know, basis. Sure. Yeah. And that that experience to them is, is just living, living well and living in the moment, Yeah, which I think is, is an important, probably different uh, frame of mind from a consumer standpoint than what the, the long lead marketers are used to, but Living in the moment and having today matter and feeling beautiful right now is enough. And we know that things will change and ebb and flow down the road. But because of that, you know, economic crisis in 2008, 2009 and the changes uh, after September 11th and things like that that have happened in the at least the early millennial lifetime, I think millennials in general are of the mindset that things can change on a dime tomorrow in ways we can't even imagine. Let's live for today. Boy, we sure know that, don't we, these days? Yeah. Before we go, what else about this conversation stood out to you? You know, I really enjoyed hearing her talk more about a return to the basics that she's seeing with the the kinds of brides that she's working with, uh, returning to just the essentials for a day and how important that is to um, to highlight for brides and grooms and their event day and what makes it special. It's not about the stuff or the materials or wowing people with some sort of astronomical installation. That's not what people are really after. They really are returning to the basic fundamentals of a, an understated elegance where you feel paid attention to and considered by the tiny details and throughout the night and the special moments. And that return to basics, I think, is really so key and part and parcel to what is, you know, the overall event goals for a lot of people these days. So that was really something I felt, you know, that she highlighted that's really special. Would you say, Valerie, that there's a sense of tradition that might be coming back as well? Yes and no. Not necessarily a tradition of hearkening to days of yore and this is the way it was always done and what does Emily Post say about the subject. I do feel like there that time has come and gone, per se. But there is a return to sort of a more general consideration of people's feelings, um, like what she was saying about the couple themselves contributing financially with their parents um, and not to usurp their parents' choices or wield power over selections being made, but in honor of that. I think that's really different. And it's, it's not super traditional, you know, for the clients to contribute financially, but it is, uh, it is reflective of a traditional, I think, value to show respect and honor the family and um, the people that have sacrificed so much to give uh, them the life that they are able to enjoy. I think that's pretty important. Yeah, I think that was really sweet when um, Carrie brought that up, and I and I love that you're bringing it up too. What about empowerment? You know, I would I would think that with couples now, you know, when you bring that up, starting to pay more and more for it, and not only to give their parents a wonderful party, their friends and family. But I would say that it's also very empowering for the couple to, you know, to feel that they can have more say in it, more influence on it, uh, because they're bringing finances to it. Sure. And that, you know, I think is is definitely uh, an important motivating factor when, when that is considered. Clients want to live well above all else. And I think that's the, that sort of redefinition of luxury that, that Carrie is talking about. And part of that is clients these days and, and brides and grooms, those that are contributing to their own event, they have very specific opinions about what they want to see. And it might diverge from what you know, their parents think it should be a priority. So, um, you know, specialty cocktail service, for example, is something that an older generation might not really value. And I've heard it too from parents who say, I go to these mixology bars and I don't want to wait 20 minutes for a drink. 
But on the flip side, the younger generation is uh, more interested in the varying flavor profiles and the intricacies of the the recipe that's used and and where and why and how that all comes together and has meaning for them. So um, where that is important, you know, the the clients have a different priority and want to finance that accordingly. And I think that makes perfect sense. Yes, yes, indeed. Well, that is all the time we have for today. Valerie, I want to thank you so much for coming on to talk about all this. I love whenever you do this. So thank you. Thank you. I love joining you on this. Yeah. And I want to mention to everyone to check out Valerie's site and information at sapphireevents.com. That's S A. P as in Paul twice, S-A-P-P-H-I-R-E, events.com. That is also her social media handle. And again, we'll have all of this in the show notes. Also want to let you know how to find out more about Carrie, Carrie Goldberg. Um, You can go to harpersbazaar.com forward slash wedding. And there's also, again, more in the show notes as well as all of the social media handles for Carrie and and, uh, Harper's Bazaar want to also mention that next week's episode is going to be Christina Matucci, Executive Director of David Beam Destination. Uh, And this is a real fascinating conversation because Christina had a very popular talk at Engage last year talking about what she terms being a number two and how can you be the best number two? What do you need to do to support your number one and vice versa? You know, what, what can the number ones learn in order to best support their number twos and so much more than just that. So tune in next week. We also want to thank our sponsor, Kushner Entertainment at kushnerentertainment.com. And we'll catch you all next week on The Wedding Biz.